My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros, helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. Hi, my name is Amy Jo Short, and my leadership quote comes from Simon Sinek. Working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. The Leader Assistant Podcast is exclusively brought to you by Goody, which provides effortless gifting for all occasions. If you're tired of sending tacky, impersonal business gifts, then you should definitely check out Goody. My friends at Goody offer a collection of hundreds of curated brands like Levain Bakery, Therabody, Milk Bar, and Ember Mugs. With Goody, if your recipient doesn't like your gift, they can swap it out for one they do like. You can find perfect gifts for any occasion, whether it's work anniversaries, birthdays, new hire onboarding, or company swag. It's free to start gifting, and you get a $20 credit when you sign up. Also, be sure to mention the Leader Assistant Podcast when signing up, and Goody will add an extra $10 credit to your account. So go to leaderassistant.com slash Goody to disrupt the inefficiencies in your team's gifting strategy. Again, that's leaderassistant.com slash Goody. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to the Leader Assistant Podcast. It's your host, Jeremy Burrows, and today I'm speaking with Amy Jo Short, and Amy Jo goes by AJ. Uh, AJ is Executive Assistant at Rodney Strong Wine Estates in Northern California, and AJ, I'm very excited to be speaking with you today. Thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. This is uh, this is amazing. I've been listening to your podcasts for a while now, so I feel privileged to be part of it. Awesome. Yeah, you're episode 163. So for those listening, you can check out the show notes, uh, links to uh, say hi to AJ and uh, reach out and a bunch of other links at leaderassistant.com slash 163 leaderassistant.com slash 163. All right, AJ, well, let's jump in. Um, how did you end up in the assistant role? Well, you know, Jeremy, in the beginning of my career, I was in customer service. So many years spent just uh, doing a lot of customer care. And the company that I was working for at the time um, was not in the wine industry, but it was here in Northern California. And they brought in an executive from the UK. And he didn't have an assistant and they wanted him to have somebody to report to him and to help him with, you know, kind of navigating the company, navigating everything. And so um, I jumped in. I jumped in to be his assistant and I kind of never looked back. So, um, of course, with that being said, customer service, you know, I continue to utilize those customer service skills, right, in interacting with him internally, externally, you know, company leadership even outside clients. So I definitely uh, still use those skills in those early years of my career. Yeah, customer service is definitely a uh, industry or career path that transfers well to the EA role as we often have to serve lots of customers um, on behalf of our executives. Um, we even serve other executives and are almost act like customer service for the leadership team sometimes. No doubt. No doubt. So what's your favorite part um, throughout your career and even today in your current role? What's your favorite part about being an assistant? Well, I'd have to say that my favorite part of being an assistant is being able to make, make a positive difference in someone, somebody's day, like every day, right? There are so many roles within the company that work independently and ultimately, you know, their work affects other people. But as somebody's assistant, like each and every day you you directly touch like both their workflow and culture deliverables and, you know, like whether you're prioritizing emails or making travel arrangements or creating 
an executive summary or a presentation, you know, you represent both your executive and the company. And it just feels like I always make a joke, you know, if somebody walks by and they ask, you know, how are you today? And what do you, you know, I'm up, you know, just working hard, making a difference is kind of a, kind right. of a line that I use. And it's, that's basically why I love being an assistant because I feel like I make a difference in their lives. Hmm. Yeah. So a lot of people have been reaching out to me saying, Hey, I just transitioned to the EA career. Uh, or maybe I was in, I was an assistant back in the day and I had some time off and ra- you know, raised a few kids or whatever. Um, and now I'm back and I just want to make sure I start off well. So do you have any tips for new assistants or assistants getting back into uh, this profession as they kick off their career? Absolutely. Um, you know, the internet is such a vast um, source of knowledge, right? There's any, any given day you can find so many tips for organizing your day, organizing your life. I mean, it's on TikTok, it's on all the different platforms on how to organize. Uh, my best tip for new assistants is to try a few different things, try, try a few different organizational things that they find, um, either recommendations or even just researching online. But ultimately, you have to find the one or two that's going to work for you. Because ultimately, if you can't, fi- I mean, you can find the most cutting edge technology or organizational skill, but if it's not the way you work organically, then it's just going to seem like a task, right? So I'll use an example of email. So there's so many different ways you can organize your email. And I used to organize my email back in the day. I would organize, I'd have a folder for everybody and have a folder for anybody that I interacted with. And it would just kind of be file things away so that I wouldn't forget anything. But it gets really cumbersome. So I developed, you know, my own kind of take on the stack method. And so now... I trust my network that I'm going to be able to do a search feature and find what I really need. But ultimately, I don't have to spend that much time because it just goes into a couple of folders instead of a folder for each and every person. Mm -hmm. So my tip is to find something, you know, try out a few things, but find something that's going to work for you, like personally in the way that you work. Yeah, well said. And, you know, when you start, this is, I I was the same way. Like I used to label everything like crazy. And then I realized that the Gmail, Google search algorithms were so good that I could find whatever I wanted just by typing in a few keywords. I'm like, all right, why am I wasting so much time labeling? (laughs) Um, but yeah, just trial and error, try it out. Um, don't be afraid to change your system and don't be afraid to adapt as you get in and get more experience. So yeah, well, well said. So you're in the wine industry, um, and yes. anyone who knows even a little bit about wine knows that that means parties and events and winery tours and all that fun stuff. How much of your role right now involves event planning and coordination? You know, Jeremy, I am. I have such a super exciting role. I mean, some people they kind of go through their day and they don't get to you know do a lot of events. Um, of course, the wine industry, it's a little cyclic, so there's a lot more lot more going on during certain months than others. But I am, you know, I get to touch so many different things. I, you know, and working for the president of the company, I get to do, you know, maybe some small, organize some small tastings for maybe a family friend that's coming in. Or I get to organize a larger distributor group coming in or even a, you know, multi-day program that could be include accommodations or transportation and tastings and vineyard tours and seminars and ultimately executive presentations. So there's so many different moving parts of so many different events that I get to be part of all of it. Now, do I do all of it? No, I don't do all of it. <laughs> a lot of organization. I have a great team my hospitality team, my events team. So, and, you know, even our, our groups, you know, we have vendors that we use primarily, but I work for a wonderful company. We have a great venue. You know, we can 
seat up to we have well we have the lawn for concerts so it's up to 1200 people so I also get to help with you know organizing concerts as well so there's there are a lot of really fun things that I get to do um, but I would have to say that it's just you want people walking away from any event you do with a positive image of your company and that's what I strive to do with all of these interactions is just make sure that when they walk away from a concert or a meeting that they have a positive feeling about what they just enjoy, you know, enjoyed. Hmm. Yeah. So do you have any tips for those listening that do plan a lot of events or what have you seen, um, are examples of well planned and well executed and engaging events? Wow. So it's only a 30 minute podcast. So let me see what I can do. <laughs> let, me, let me condense it down. I would have to say it's never too early to book a venue and start planning. That's my number one tip. It's never too early, um, especially now. Right. Like kind of semi post covid, but just venues and staffing and supply chain. They all require such significant lead times right now. So it's never too early. So even if you think you're going to do, um, we're going to do a sales meeting in 2023, start planning now, 2024, start planning now, even if it's simply to get the venue and just kind of start thinking about like the overarching value of what the event is going to bring. And it's kind of funny because it could be collaboration. It could be team building. It could be, you know, education, but if it, or it could be driving like company culture, and once you have like that overarching, you have your venue, you have kind of what you want this meeting to be, every aspect of that, you just keep kind of going back to it. Is it going to align with this? Is it going to align with that value? And, uh, oh, well, you know, and when possible, add wine. <laughs> that's, that's what, <laughs> if you can. <laughs> and call you if, if they need help call with me. that. Add right? wine. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, planning ahead. Uh, and it is, it, I have been noticing that things are getting a little bit more pre-pandemic like in the sense of like flights seem to be mm -hmm. a little bit more expensive or more or more uh, difficult to book uh maybe you know if you don't book more than a month out it's a little bit harder to find the seat you want and event spaces are starting to fill up so yeah it's definitely back to all right go ahead and plan ahead no doubt. And what we have found in um, our industry even is that we do a lot of swag bags. And so securing all of those items, that's a top priority. So if you want to secure, you know, wearables or any other type of, you know, tchotchke items, those supply chains, you know, there's lots and lots of things that are that are stopping them right now. So definitely plan that ahead. Yeah. So you've been, um, AJ, you've been a part of the leader assistant community and specifically our premium membership uh, subscribers for, I think it's coming up to about a year or so. Um, yeah. What, why did you join the community and what have you um, learned from it or, or why do you stay? <laughs> Well, I definitely, well, you know, when I read your book and I became, you know, became part of the leader assistant, um, podcast family and listen to the podcast. I listen to them when I'm walking my dog, I listen to them, you know, I just, I learn so much from your guests and, you know, I, I truly believe that assistants, we lead company culture, you know, back in the day, you know, we acted as, say, a gatekeeper, right, for my executive's time or simply acting on clerical requests or coordination. But now, you know, it's changed where, you know, we have to be thoughtful partners, right, in the execution of the company vision. And we have to be thoughtful partners in executing, you know, anything that our executives need to kind of see all the details, right, of the day-to-day -day mechanics, if you will, that don't always reach the executive level. Like there are a lot of things from day-to-day day -day processes in our companies that we know about as their assistant, but they have that, that 10,000 foot view that, you know, we have to kind of understand that we're helping every day. 
And so I found being part of this community, just learning the tips and tricks and understanding how other assistants work it in. Mm -hmm. How do they make their executives the priority? And it always comes back to communication. And so communicating with other assistants or communicating, I can reach out to another assistant and be like, oh, we're on this, you know, absolutely. I would do anything for another assistant because I know what they go through on a day to day basis, you know, and some of our some of our executives are more, you know, just the facts. Right. Just the facts. Kind of the Joe Friday of the world. Now I've dated myself, but the Joe Fridays <laughs> of the world, you know, just the facts, ma'am. Right. But there's some that like more detail. So it all comes back to communication. And I truly believe that as an assistant, you can be a leader by leading with communication, not only to your executives, but communicating to the company and being kind of that light, right? That, that, that beacon that they can reach, they can kind of seek out and know that they're going to get either answers or they're going to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, kind of good transition, um, to the my last question what makes an assistant a leader so i know you mentioned communication so maybe what's maybe you can share what's one type or or tactic when it comes to communication that really separates you know average assistants uh, from leader assistants i definitely think that being um your authentic self when you're communicating with your with your executives, um, coming to them with truly developing that relationship, right? Um, you know, I've always said, you know, there is the golden rule, right? Doing unto others as you'd have them do unto you. But I kind of always have morphed that. And it's been do un- unto others the way they like to be done unto, right? So I try to really focus on how they like to communicate and, um, the way I communicate with one executive does not necessarily mean I'm going to communicate the exact same way with the other. It's it's really just trying to figure that out and make sure that you're giving them the information in the way that they're going to receive it. And not just the way they're going to receive it, but the way that they're going to be able to utilize it for their path. Is it going to be more operational for this particular executive and more, you know, conversational for this executive? So, I think that once you develop that, it really, truly makes you, you know, a a leader assistant. Yeah, it's all about contextualizing or or changing up your style and um, adapting your communication based on the context and your your surroundings. And like you said, people's styles and preferences and all that. the good communicators know how to say the same thing in different ways uh, based on Absolutely. who they're talking to. Well, and I happen to be a storyteller communicator, and I have to know my audience because when I start, I start communicating in my style to somebody who is a just the facts, it's lost. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, AJ, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing a little bit of uh, wisdom with our audience. Is there a good place for people to reach out and connect and say hi? Well, they can always reach me on LinkedIn. Um, You find me under my name and um, top executive admin is kind of my handle. But AJ AJ rocks it is my Instagram handle. I don't post a lot, but um, if you see on my Instagram or anything like that, you're most likely going to see some goats because that's <laughs> what I do. I am a, I have my own little farm of goats and chickens. That is my passion. So, which does not seem like a lot of work when it's, you know, when it's something you love to do. So they can always reach out. Yeah. LinkedIn, Instagram, I'm on Facebook too. That's all, you know, kind of personal stuff, but I don't mind. Awesome. Well, uh, AJ, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you soon at one of our uh, members, leader assistant member uh, calls, and good luck to you, and thanks again for being on the show. Thanks so much, Jeremy. It was a pleasure. had a great time. Please review on Apple Podcasts. Gobulos.com